Hi, the subject of today's video is new tone L model eight note long tube chimes. What we have here is a new tone L model bass. L model chimes are considered to be the 1960s chimes. L model chimes replace the earlier K model chimes. K model chimes are the first post-World War II chimes, so they came out in the late 1940s, and for the most part they were in production through the end of the 1950s. And then in the 1960s, Newtone revised and modernized the design of their long tube chime bases, and those became L model chimes. L model chimes should not be confused with later LA models and LB models, and there are even some LC model chimes. Those are revisions of the original L model fundamental design, and those are all usually much later versions. So L model chimes are considered to be all pretty much 1960s chimes, and one of the ways you can tell an L model chime is it has this sort of gray gunmetal or sh battleship gray painted chassis compared to the early K model chimes which had black bases, and then the later LAs and so forth had a smaller and sort of a tan or brown colored painted chassis. So before we get into the, the specifics of L model chimes, let's look at the specifics of this particular L model chime. In particular, which one is it? And fortunately, right here on the chassis, you can see it's stamped with the model L42N and it actually has a date of manufacture which is A65A which would be January 1965. I don't know what the second A is for. Perhaps it was the first week of January of 1965. That I'm not sure about. But it, we know for a fact it's an L42N. N usually refers to it having some change. N usually stood for it meant that it was a new version of an existing model and oftentimes it would either be some change in maybe perhaps the base design or more likely in the case of a chime like this maybe it was an update to the decorative cover some style change or color change or something like that. Let's take a look and see what an L42N is exactly. So it just so happens that I actually happen to have a 1965 Newtone condensed full line product catalog. It has this very attractive gal here on the front and she's standing in front of what I would believe to be a house that's being remodeled and she's holding this catalog so it's kind of interesting because you have the picture of her holding the catalog with her on the catalog with another picture of her in the catalog and so forth. She's dressed in this really nice yellow outfit and she's sort of rocking the uh, Marlo Thomas that girl style hat here. She's holding it down because it's probably windy on the construction site that day and she doesn't want it to blow away. Uh, so this is a condensed full line catalog. It has a variety of things in it here in the front. We have a selection of Newtone range hoods and more range hoods because Newtone was really big into the range hood thing at the time. Still are actually. And here we have bathroom ventilation fans and exterior mounted wall exhaust fans. And here we have bathroom heaters and heat vent lights and radiant bulb heaters. And as we go on, believe it or not, here we have central vacuum systems in 1965. And I'm sh pretty sure that she's going to get one of those installed because it looks like the kind of house that could use a central vacuum. So she's going to choose all of this stuff out of her catalog there and she's going to create for herself what we used to call a whole house of Newtone where you could buy all of these really popular accessories for your house and they all came from Newtone and they were all really high quality. So we have central vacuum. Here we have some unique intercom systems. Up here we have a model 2071 stereo music intercom and it's shown with the optional reel-to-reel -reel tape player and in 1965 the real real the reel-to-reel -reel tape player option cost $309 which was a lot of money in 1965 down here we have a unique system that you can see this is the model N2200 
2200, I've never actually seen one of these. This was not an intercom system. This was a music center and it had a stereo receiver, AM and FM, and then you could, it came with the, with the standard record player here, and then there was an optional cassette or 8-track player, and it had a pair of speakers mounted on either side. And this was a surface-mounted wall unit. It had a long a metal bracket that you would screw to the wall, and then all of this just hung on the bracket. I think IKEA thinks they invented that, but maybe it was actually Newton. Anyway, as we go along, more intercom systems. And now we have new tone door chimes and clock chimes and clocks and transformers. And if we look over here on this page, right here is our model L42. So let's take a look and see what it says about an L42. So here's the picture of our LA42. And this is back in the day when new tone door chimes were a special item and all new tone door chimes had names. So it says over here in the description, it was new in 1965. And LA42 is called the Barcelona long tube chime. And the description is Spanish in a dark antique oak finish with carved filigree against a green textured cloth Four tubes are satin finished brass. It has the Westminster chime sequence and a volume control for four or eight notes for front door, one rear door, and a different note for the third door. Transformer included, and the retail price in 1965 was $57.95, which is actually quite a bit of money, I think, in 1965. And as a comparison, over here, we have an L56, and the L56 is the Jefferson, and the Jefferson is a long tube chime. It says, a magnificent colonial wall clock and door chime with the exquisite Westminster chime sequence. Rich walnut wood cabinet, antique white clock face, has gold and tan filigree corner decorations, selector switch for eight or four notes for front door, one note for rear, different note for third door. A transformer is included and the retail price for an L56 in 1965 was $110.75. And I think that you have to be making some pretty good coin to afford a chime like this. So these were serious choices when someone was building or remodeling a home and they're good quality chimes. So let's get back to our chime base now that we've had a visit to the past and see what's different about an L model chime compared to a K model chime. Let's compare the differences between the earlier K model chimes and the newly introduced L model chimes for say 1960. Both chimes are the same size. The width of the base is the same between K's and L's. However, the L is somewhat taller than the K model chime, although the tube hanging area and the solenoids are actually somewhat smaller, so the overall height of the chime base is very similar. Both models use Telecron motor assemblies. However, back in the, this is a mid-50s chime base, this motor assembly was made by Telecron Incorporated in Ashland, Massachusetts, and this one Telecron synchronous motor. This was made by the General Electric Company. So by this time General Electric had absorbed Telecron. One of the other differences is K model chimes are designed to have two separate push buttons. You have a front door button which would be your four or eight note chime and then a single rear door button for a single note on a single tube. The L model chimes introduced a third option which is the side door button. So you have both front, rear, and side. Front still rings your eight or four note Westminster chime and then you have a single note for the side door and a different single note for the rear door as the brochure pointed out. So it's the first time that you could have th up to three doorbell buttons that would ring differently. Each chime base has a eight and four note switch here and here on the K-Model chime it's a lever switch that's mounted at the top of the chassis above the Telecron motor here it's a little sw slide switch that's on the plastic base of the motor assembly. And you simply move it to whichever position you want for the number of rings that you want on your chime. Here on the K-Model chime we have this fairly elaborate 
volume control from soft to loud and it actually has an off position which turns the chime off altogether and here we have a rotary what's really a potentiometer something like you would have on an intercom station for instance and there is no off position but you still have loud to soft and you can adjust how hard the plungers strike the tubes. Some of the other differences are K-model chimes use a lot of rubber grommets. So you have rubber grommets all over and everything that mounts onto the chassis assembly, for the most part, any moving part, is isolated with a rubber grommet and a brass insert with a threaded screw to hold the device to the chassis. So this particular K-model chime has a total of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 rubber grommets to isolate everything. One of the things that you see when you repair these all the time is as time went on the number of grommets became fewer and fewer. By the time we get to 1960 with L model chimes rubber grommets are a thing of the past. Now everything is simply screwed to the metal chassis. There's no grommets behind the motor assembly. There's no grommets holding the solenoid assemblies to the chassis, it's all just threaded screws. So again, it's cost saving and ease of manufacturing and so forth and streamlining what goes on. One of the other differences is on the solenoid assemblies, K-model chimes for the most part, the solenoid is a brass tube with an electromagnet wrapped around it and on the front of it, there's a cap with a hole and these slip on to the ends of the tubes to prevent the plunger from flying out when it's activated. And so you have four caps that have to be manufactured and they have to be installed on the tubes and so forth. And here we have a somewhat different design where the front of the solenoid tube is rolled over to make it smaller so the plunger can't fly out. So you've eliminated the need to manufacture four caps and have someone put the caps on the ends of the tubes. So these changes would have streamlined the building of the chime. It also would have been fewer parts that had to be manufactured to assemble the chime. And then one of the other differences is if we turn over the K-model chime, K-model chimes have a lot of individual wires that connect up the different parts of the chime to allow it to operate. So all of these wires, this would have been all hand assembled. Somebody would have sat there and had a tray of pre-cut red cloth wrapped wires and their job would have been to solder it from here to here and another one from here to this side and so on and so on. And that's a fairly time consuming process to do. The L model chimes did away with a lot of this individual wiring and went to a more streamlined, easier to manufacture design. K model chimes were more hand assembled. L model chimes are the very first chime that used a type of circuit board to replace and eliminate all of the hand individual wiring that was done on K-model chimes. So L-model chimes are the first and the original design where they use some type of circuit board to create the wiring that allows the chime to operate the way it does. And here we have this black circuit board here and it has the different connections for your power and button wires here. The volume control is soldered onto pads on the board and behind the motor, which you'll see in a minute, are the circuit traces that allow the motor, to, which turns the armature, to make the proper connections to make the solenoids fire in the right order. These boards are some type of phenolic resin probably. I don't think they're fiberglass. Phenolic resin is an early type of plastic and uh, it was popular. One of the things that I find interesting on here is down here it says Newtone Cincinnati, Ohio with the Newtone name with the big uppercase T. And this is the same sort of chime indication label that they used on all new tone chimes going back to the 30s. It didn't change until much later on. One of the other changes on L model chimes has to do with the Telecron motor and motor assembly. L model chimes are the first chimes that the motor sits on a molded 
plastic base instead of having brass standoffs and machine screws and so forth. So this was probably much easier to assemble. The motor has also changed. It could be that it's a newer style of motor because Telecron was at that point owned by General Electric. So on K model chimes, most of them have the motor assembly is a model B3. And on most L model chimes, it's a model H18. One of the other changes is K model chimes are four RPM motors. This one is 3.4 RPM, so it's a little bit slower. And I'm not sure whether that actually changes the pace at which the tubes are struck or that's taken into account because of the new circuit board design and you could make it ring at the same pace by designing the board a certain way. One of the other differences is K model chimes are all 20 volt chimes. And I think 20 volt transformers may have been falling out of favor. And L model chimes are the first Newton chimes that are 16 volt chimes, which is considered to be a modern chime. And modern chimes that they make today are still 16 volt chimes. It sort of has become the standard. This would have used a new tone. I think back in the day, it would be a 301 or a 301N perhaps. And it's 16 volts at 30 watts. On L model chimes, you still have your four solenoid assemblies. And as I pointed out earlier, gone are the brass end caps. Now we have a formed tube here and the opening in the end of the tube. You can see how it's sort of rolled over here to make the opening smaller so the plunger can't fall out of the front. The solenoid assemblies are actually somewhat smaller than K model chimes. The size of the solenoid assembly, it's not nearly as thick and therefore the coil I don't believe is as large and therefore not as powerful, but you still have the rubber caps on the ends and these are the styles that the springs go in first and then the plungers and then the cushion and the cap on the back. The springs on an L model chime are shorter springs than on a K model chime, but they are the same diameter and the pitch of the coils is the same. For all of the speed and ease of assembling a chime on a circuit board, you still Still have individual wires from each solenoid that have to be routed around and soldered onto their proper connections. Down here on this tab of the circuit board, this is the common tab, so one wire from each solenoid ends up being soldered on this point. And then over here on this tab, there are four individual connection points and one, the second wire from each solenoid gets soldered onto its appropriate tab. So when the chime operates, it sends power to the right solenoid at the right time to ring the sequence properly. So the Telecron motor assembly is held in place with four screws, and these are machine screws. These are not particularly long. I was actually surprised when I took this one apart earlier to find that the screws are rather short in my opinion. I don't know whether that was common on all of them or perhaps it was something they changed later on. They certainly are shorter than the same type of screw that was used on the LAs and later chimes. So to take the Telecron motor assembly off the base, you loosen the four screws and if you have big fingers, you need something to sort of pull the screw up with. Like that. And once it's loose, you can lift the Telecron motor assembly off the base. And now we have a look at the circuit board. The circuit board area under the motor assembly, you can see these circular traces. This is actually would be considered to be a circuit board and you have these silver traces. So for instance, this one, which comes from the common screw, travels down here and it's all of this area here and over in this area. And this one for the transformer, it goes down through the volume control assembly because what you're doing with the volume control is adjusting the voltage to the solenoids to make them hit harder or softer. This is actually a two-sided board. There are circuit traces on the other side also, so it jumps underneath and makes connections here. It's probably one of these, and it makes connections 
on this part of the board. You can see here we have one for the front door. Front door goes here and here and snakes through the cutout here to the center and so forth. So this is a design that as the motor turns the three arm armature, it makes different connections and that's what makes the solenoids fire in the correct order. The L model chimes along with its new Telecron motor assembly and its plastic mounting base for the motor assembly is are the very first models that Newtone used the concealed three arm armature with the contact points on the ends of each arm and as the motor turns it turns the three arm armature and these contact points touch different paths on the circuit board and that's what makes the ch chime operate in the correct sequence. These contacts are larger than the later ones they use in the LA and later chimes. These also have a much more elegant little bump on them to make sure that they make a good contact and although there are two or actually there are four contact points on each one. They are joined together down here so each one of these counts as one contact point. And as you can see here so you have this arm and this arm and then you have one contact point here and one here with a little space in the middle and then another one here and another one here with a space in the middle and these have a really nice elegant design to them. You have the flat part here that comes up at an angle and then it rolls over the top and then tucks back under on this side so when this is placed against the circuit board the circuit board will push down on both of the, or this will push down onto the circuit board so it makes sort of a friction connection and it has a nice amount of bounce to it and it's actually a much more elegant design than what they use later on. These are rarely a problem on these. These don't get broken unless someone does something to them. However, they will get dirty. You'll get carbon buildup at the point of contact on each one of these. And the easiest way to do this, as I've shown in other videos, is you can very carefully use a small pencil eraser to rub away the carbon and then use an alcohol swab to just sort of clean it off. When you do that, you want to make sure that you support it underneath either with a screwdriver or I just use my finger because you don't want to bend these. If you bend these out of shape, they won't make the proper contacts and the chime doesn't work correctly. Since this is an irreplaceable part, you'll never ever find one of these if you need one. You have to be really careful so you don't damage it. And as with many Newtone products, they thought enough to give us a little servicing instruction label on here. So it says service instructions, plungers must operate operate freely and that's very important. I've done other videos about how to clean the solenoids and clean the plunger assemblies and this is not what I'm doing in this video. If you need to see how to do that there's a video which I'll put in a link to in the description down below and it shows you how to do that in great detail. Those type of solenoids are the same type as on the L model chimes but what it says here for those of you who need some extra instructions it says you can clean the plungers and sleeves as follows remove the tone bars or tubes in this case if necessary and place a few, few drops of lighter fluid lighter fluid like Ronson or Zippo or something like that this kind of lighter fluid the kind your granddad puts in his Zippo lighter not barbecue lighter fluid, not paint thinner, not any type of grease, not lacquer thinner, not acetone, definitely not WD-40 or anything like that, just plain old lighter fluid like this. See, even in 1965, that's what they wanted you to do. So let's do what they say and just do it that way. Anyway, back to our label. Place a few drops of lighter fluid in the plunger holes, then operate the chime a few times either by hand I don't know what that means exactly, or by pressing the button. And then in big letters with an underline under it, it says, do not oil the plungers. And they put that on there, I think because they don't want you to oil the plungers. So let's not do that. That's um, the servicing instructions from 1965. So that's an overview of a 1965 Newtone L model eight note long tube chime. And as with all the chime videos, I'm pretty sure, it's never actually finished until you've rung the chime. So this L model base belongs to a customer and I've already serviced it. 
let's go ahead and ring it and see how it sounds. So I have the L model base installed on my newly built Chime testing jig. So I have a set of K model tubes hung on the L model base. The hanger height is the same on K's and L's, which makes it more convenient. And I already had these out, that's why I use these. So I've got it all set up. So let's go ahead and we'll ring our rear door. Sounds good, resonates nicely. Then we'll do our side door. And now we'll go ahead and ring our eight note Westminster. Watch the lights. Sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and switch it over to four notes. And you'll notice after the four notes, it takes longer for the lights to come back on because the motor still has to do its full rotation before it's ready to go again. So one last time, eight notes are the best. And there you have it. A serviced L model chime from 1965. It's the Barcelona and it's going back to the electrician that sent it in for a local customer and they're going to reinstall it in their house after having some remodeling done because even after people remodel they still like their chimes. So I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. If you like our channel and you learn things from it please subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. And if you do that, you'll get notifications as we post new videos. That's all for today. See you on the next video.